Hello and welcome to The Drum. I'm Tim Palmer. Coming up today, a look at Saturday's New South Wales state election and the political furor kicking up now over whether Labor's annihilation had anything to do with Julia Gillard's carbon tax. And we'll see what's been happening in the Middle East over the weekend as rebels retake key towns in Libya and Syria deploys its army to crack down on the unrest there. Our panel tonight, the member for Goulburn, the successful member for Goulburn, Prue Goward, yes. <laughs> Andrew West from the Sydney Morning Herald and Michael Gleeson from Hawker Britain. Hello. Welcome to you all. Pleasure to be Settled here. in after the state election. Yes. <laughs> we'll get to that state of all straight, straight away. First, it's a staggering result, one that was expected. Saturday state election in New South Wales. Barry O'Farrell is New South Wales' new Premier. And after being sworn in at state parliament this morning. The New South Wales coalition swept into power after voters delivered Mr O'Farrell a predicted 70-seat majority in the lower house. Christina Keneally's Labor government was routed, reduced to a predicted 20 or 22 seats. Today, Barry O'Farrell started his new job by walking to work from Wynyard Station in Sydney, an image suggesting he'll be putting the focus squarely on transport reform. He says before any projects are shovel-ready, there'll be a thorough audit of the state's books. I want to start with knowing what the bottom line is, but I say again, there'll be no gotcha moment, there'll be no announcement that because of the state of finances we can't deliver or won't deliver our promises. We undertook the exercise of outlining our savings to guarantee to the people of this state that we would deliver on our promises. That's what we're keen to do. Start with the finances, start with the financial audit and then start the delivery process. Well, Mike Baird, the Liberal member for Manly and the Coalition's incoming Treasurer, says the new government's agenda won't include cuts to the public service. Cutting nurses, we're not cutting teachers, we're not cutting police, and that's and that's exactly what uh, state labor would have you believe. And we're going to uh, we're going to disappoint them terribly. So we're going to get on with actually improving uh, the services of this state, and, and we're going arm in arm with the public service. Well, Prue Goward, first of all, congratulations, although it was probably the, the most widely anticipated foregone that's conclusion in the history of Australian <laughs> politics, really, wasn't it? But it has taken nearly a generation for the yes. coalition to come out of the political wilderness. I mean, Mike Baird there, the son of a man, who Bruce Baird, who was a minister in the last That's coalition right. government, that drives it home, doesn't it? It must be a remarkable sentence to be on the uh, yes. Treasury side Absolutely. of the benches History up 16 years. in the making, of course. It's, but it's a combination of a lot of things. I agree that uh, we had to get our act together. G governments uh, fall, but oppositions have to be fit to govern. And Barry O'Farrell brought the opposition together. No leak from the shadow, uh, uh, shadow Cabinet room in the four years, which I think is always indicative of the stability of the party, uh, and a party that was very focused on doing the right thing by New South Wales. We churned out a lot of policy work, uh, again, with all the limited resources of um, government. So governments lose elections, but you've got to be fit to govern, and I think Barry O'Farrell's ensured that we are. There is the sense that the ALP won more, won more election than it was entitled to, that yes, Peter true. Debnam couldn't manage... Uh, a fractious <laughs> coalition at that yes, point. In the end, is that is that what's delivered you, this unparalleled Well, there's success? always an argument that uh, if they miss out on the election that they should have lost, then they're absolutely whacked the next time. But, no, I, I think, again, governments lose, but oppositions have to be ready to govern, and obviously we needed more time. And uh, I think it was a combination of a lot of things. I mean, 16 years is a lot of um, service delivery failure in whatever area you care to think of. Uh, trains, public transport, uh, the M5, roads, you know, wherever you like to look, it was terrible. But I think also uh, they, Labor lost the tradies' vote. They lost the aspirational middle vote, and that is now firmly in our camp. So the whole tribalism of Labor that was based well, basically on an inward-looking uh, culture, that's really what was smashed on Saturday night. Well, that's, that's interesting what, that's because there's, an, out, there's an outer ring of seats now that some people would suggest may be lost to Labor for some time, although that was said of the John Howard's battlers and some of them came back. Michael Gleeson... Do you think that's happened, that people have defected and may not come back, seats like Riverston and Mulgoa? And what, what sort of government do you expect this new government to be? Well, at the outset, um, it's hard not to feel happy for Barry O'Farrell. I need to say that. Uh, this is the culmination of what's been a very long career in politics. And, and you know, I remember Barry when he was uh, working for Bruce Baird back in the Griner government. He then became the state director of the Liberal Party. And he's gone through this metamorphosis from being someone who probably would never have become Premier 
to someone who has probably run the most disciplined campaign that the Libs have run, I think, in the 16 years that I've been watching uh, this government. Uh, 